Spock. Spock, give it up. Return to the Enterprise family. All charges will be dropped. And the, the madness that temporarily overcame all of us on Camus II will fade and be forgotten. And what will become of Dr. Lester? Dr. Lester will be cared for, always. It is a debt and a responsibility I owe her from the past. No, sir. I shall not withdraw a single charge that I have made. You are not Captain Kirk. You have ruthlessly appropriated his body. But the life entity within you is not that of Captain Kirk. You do not belong in charge of the Enterprise. And I shall do everything in my power against you. Risk. Risk is our business. Out there. That way. It was founded to seek out new life. Well, there it sits. Oh, 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 oh. Rock and roll. Six. We're not afraid of diversity. We don't persecute it. We embrace it. At least I won't die alone. Federation of planets. And reach for the stars. Those were the days. Program complete. Enter when ready. Welcome back to another Retrek review, where each week we talk about Star Trek. And this week we're talking about the series finale of Star Trek the original series, the episode entitled Turnabout Intruder. Turnabout Intruder was originally aired June 3rd, 1969. It was a teleplay by Arthur Singer, a story by Gene Roddenberry, and directed by Herb Wallerstein. The synopsis for Turnabout Intruder is Dr. Janice Lester, a mad scientist tries to take control of the Enterprise by switching bodies with Captain Kirk. So, that is the introduction. Let's go to Caleb and ask what he thought of the episode. Boy, what a good finale this was. This was, uh... It's so funny to me, too, like, back in the day, like, season finales, like, weren't a thing. Right, right. Especially because it's not, you know... Yeah like a, a fluid storyline. So it's just like, right. this is like the last episode of Star Trek season three. Yeah. No big deal. Who cares? <laughs> Not like this big, like crescendo to like, Oh man, I can't wait for next season. No. It was just like, Hey, that thing was really stupid. Oh, well <laughs> check off, take us out. Warp five. Warp five. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, um, it's a bad episode. Um, I gotta say it, uh, Not it's great. pretty rough. It's yep. pretty rough. <clears throat> it's like um, an interesting concept and an interesting thing to do in general. But yeah, yeah, it's executed very poorly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I I think the storyline is kind of interesting as far as like right. m- you know swapping bodies and right, um, right, right getting to experience it from the other side but it's just like the whole thing is just yeah it's just so funny because it's like clearly overall arcing stories like see this is what happens when women are in charge of things they yeah. go ballistic the emotions are too strong they go crazy it's like men do the same thing like <laughs> men right. right it's just that yeah. like kirk is not like that right but like right, right. men also have the potential to just be very emotional and angry all the time about stuff and i mean i just didn't show you the episodes but there's like three or four episodes where he's taking on insane male captains from the federation yeah and it's just like it's right yeah so it's it's a thing that happens yeah (laughs) yeah so it's a thing that happens right it's like these there's people in the in the in the Federation or attached to it in some way that lose their mind and Kirk has to deal with it. But yep. they just, it's, it's, it's literally things that they wrote her to say. 
Other than honestly, if you if you like, excluded all of the stuff that like is her quote unquote motivation, I don't think it would be as bad. It still would be kind of rough, but it wouldn't be as bad. Well, her like whole motivation specifically is that like she wants to kill Kirk, but she can't do it herself for some reason. Right. And it's like why? Why? Well, because like Kirk is so dated, muscular and tough. You date. Did once, and now you're like mad about it. It's not deep, that's for sure. Yeah, and there's so many, there's so many times in in a show too, specifically where it's like, hey, we're doing this thing, and like all the characters are like, that's not a thing oh, that we can do yeah. or should do, or that Kirk would even do. Yeah, I know Kirk very well, and he wouldn't do this. It's like, so what? What are we doing then? I don't understand. Yeah, and then Spock is like. You know, this thing, and they're like, no, Mm -mm, Spock, (laughs) that's mutiny. We can't do that. Right. (laughs) Okay. You all know that something is wrong, and you deal with space weirdness all the time. But in this case, you're like, I don't know. That that would be against Federation protocol to do that. (laughs) Shut up. (laughs) Federation protocol, you're 14 weeks from anywhere. Like, what right. are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. It, it gets a little little nutty. It does. I did not like it. That's my... <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's okay. My review. Yeah. So we can move on to our subscriber shout out and comments. So we got one new subscriber since the last podcast. And they are... And I'm going to butcher their name. And I'm sorry. It is Mel Vavaro... Audis, and we appreciate you subscribing. <laughs> and just a little bit ago, like last night, we got a comment from Captain Alimar on our last podcast, All Our Yesterdays. Hmm. So he writes, Judo Chop. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a great episode this week with men- many half baked ideas. Mr. Ataz has two mm. copies of himself, and except for push uh, for the amazing action scene where Kirk pushes them over, uh, they do nothing. Yeah. Mr. Ataz wants to join his family. Why hasn't he yet? Mm-hmm. Uh, Zarabeth mentions that she and her family are prisoners, but her crime never comes up, and the prosecutor in Kirk's area isn't related to her. Why does Kirk deny Scotty's request to send half a dozen security guys immediately after returning to the present and then gets stunned by Mr. Ataz making him look kind of dumb? In the positive, Kirk, Spock, and Bones are always great together, like you guys mentioned, and the scene where Kirk rolls off the cart was pretty funny. (laughs) Yeah. Thanks, as always, guys. Looking forward to more Trek. That's so. a good that, yeah, that's a good that's a good part of that episode. <laughs> yeah, that was funny, right? We don't think we even mentioned that where Scotty's like, I can I'll send down a button. He's like, no, no, Scotty, no, yeah. no, no. Mm-mm. That would just mean more people to beam up at the same time. We don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh something happening here. No, no, mm-mm, no. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No, I've trapped a man in the closet, and the other one I've knocked out. I couldn't tell you where the third... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. So, as always, thanks for subscribing, everybody. Thanks for your comments. You know, you, you hear Captain Ali Mar every week, so if you want to hear your, your name shout out, leave something in the comments, and uh, I'm sure we'll talk about it. But now, we can move on to the review. Before we get into the intro, I thought of you and I wrote down another abandoned location. <laughs> and I was like, where everyone is dead. Yeah. There's faint signs of life forms and radiation. We don't know why anybody's here, where anybody is. <laughs> no. Yeah. I knew it went back to the ship when I first, uh, like, I had that brain skip where I was like, oh, no, is this going to be another episode that they're only in this, like, lab? 
but no. <laughs> then the thing that made me laugh was it was like doctor's orders are to stay quiet, but then she immediately talks and Kirk doesn't recommend that she stop talking. Yeah, you could tell right off the bat that that like doctor guy was weird. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, no, 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 you can't talk to her, you can't talk to her. And then she was like, mm. like, well, probably wouldn't hurt if you just stayed here and... I don't know, like, talk to talk her. Talk to her. <laughs> 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 well, yeah. perhaps you could use a little company down here. Yeah. I don't know. Who am I? I'm just a doctor. <laughs> like, the other thing is, too, is Kirk obviously knows who she is like he acts mm-hmm. all kind of like sweet with her but like immediately it just goes sideways so yeah. I don't know it's just it's yeah it's strange yes yeah, this whole kind of like setup where you know it's like oh yeah I know we know each other very well no not really she kind of hates you and detests you for some yeah, reason right. <laughs> because you get to be a Starfleet captain? Like, I don't understand what her... <laughs> so she says this line where at first I was like, ugh, this is really unbearable kind of sexism. Mm-hmm. It's like really overt. Mm-hmm. But as like the episode went on, she says a couple other things. So I was like, how am I supposed to take this? So the line that she says to Kirk is like, basically, there's no room for women in Starfleet. And I was like, yeah, I didn't understand what that meant. Right. Because I'm thinking, well, well there's, we've seen multiple women in Starfleet. So then I was like, is she trying to say that there are no women captains in the original series? You don't see any female captains. Right. And then we know that like Enterprise and Strange New Worlds introduce like female captains. Like we yeah. have. But obviously, this that's decades after the show, and it doesn't matter. So, I was like, hmm. But later, and I forget exactly what she says, but she goes on to basically indicate that perhaps she was trying to be captain and failed to meet the recommendations and now was angry at Kirk for, you know, because he got captaincy when she didn't type of thing. Like, she was just crazy, essentially. It almost, yeah, they almost kind of played out where, like, they both were in the academy together. Right. And he got the role of captain, and she couldn't stand the idea of, like, being, like, his subordinate on the ship with him. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, so basically what I wrote was, it's either there's no room in Kirk's, like, individual world for her in his captaincy. And she was mad about that because now it's like a lost love. Or she wasn't promoted and just says all women because she's just mad. Yeah. It's like, but it really teeters on the whole, like, a terribly sexist point of view from the 60s. It, like, really mm-hmm. teeters on that pretty hard. I think it's specifically, like, being captain, I think, is, is yeah. her main... I don't know. It's funny. It is. I also think she's kind of, like, gone crazy Oh, from radiation yeah. on that planet. Oh, I okay. Think. Okay. You know? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not that they, like, specifically say that, but it's, like, I think she's got something else going on other than just, like, female hysteria. (laughs) (laughs) Right, right. Yeah. Well, the thing that makes me laugh is she's, like, oh, mm, oh." and he's, like, looking at the wall. And then she's, like, wow, this is "Ah, very ah." ornate. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, (laughs) exactly. And then she immediately gets up and runs over, and it's just, like, Uh now I'm in your body. Oh, now I'll throw this switch. <laughs> and we will switch. <laughs> and we, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I yeah, always man. love those effects where they're like, all right, Kirk, we need you to um like turn around and get pulled to that wall. And don't worry about it. We'll we'll just speed it up in post. We'll just oh. we'll just speed up the footage in post. Yeah, yeah. 
Like, now we got to make it look inhuman. You got to make it look like he had no choice, no, it's, right? It's look fast. Yeah. So we go through the intro and we come back and I, I wrote down, what a wonderful character for women everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, but the thing I liked that I thought was a good touch for the writing was every time um how do we how do we say this for people who maybe haven't seen the episode mm-hmm. uh I don't want to call her Lester Kirk but basically like <laughs> you know Kirk that's not normal Kirk Lester yeah Kirk Lester <laughs> James Lester, I don't know. So at least his first name wasn't Mo. <laughs> <laughs> on, I'm not even saying it. I'm not falling for it. <laughs> Is there a Mo? Okay, so yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> is every time Lester Kirk um talks on like a communicator or on a comm or a thing. He says, Captain Kirk here, right? Yeah. And I like it because he when you watch the show, he either say he just says Kirk or whatever. He doesn't say Captain Kirk. He always no, just like Kirk here. Or he'll be like Kirk out or whatever. But now it's like well conceited, yes, I agree. But also she doesn't know how Kirk talks. Like she doesn't right, right. Yeah. She doesn't know what, what he says. So there's a couple funny things that like she does know. Like she knows to call um McCoy Bones. Ah. And it was like, why does she know his yes, name? But yeah. she doesn't. And I and I picked up on that too. When they come off of the transporter, she says, Dr. McCoy, Dr. McCoy, Dr. McCoy. And he doesn't mm-hmm. he doesn't bat an eyelash at it. And then Time later, go time goes by, and he's in now. Lester Kirk is in Kirk's quarters, and that's when he addresses oh. him as Bones. Up until that point, it's Doctor McCoy. That is true. Yeah, you're yeah, right. And I think that that was the point was to show that she was getting more information on the guy. And like learning how to like blend in better. She was reading Kirk's diary on this. Computer. Right, exactly. Like today, Spock and Bones and I, we all went down to the planet surface. <laughs> <laughs> we had hot like, fudge oh. Sundays last yeah. night. Yeah. <laughs> we. <laughs> and she's so mad. It's like, oh, he's having ice cream with his captain. <laughs> if I was a captain, I could be having ice cream as well. <laughs> <laughs> he is. Yeah. And then the funny thing was, so now you get Kirk Lester. God, you this get, is so... No, I don't know. You get, you know, so Kirk is now in the body of the doctor. Yeah. It's just like that thing where she's waking up, or he's waking up, whatever. And it's like, oh, it's just so dark, disoriented and confused this, Stop anything. Uh, mm, uh, and it's like, yeah, because if he woke up immediately and was just like, why am I over there? Yeah. Like, well, what do you mean, doctor? Be like, doctor? It's like, I'm Captain Kirk. And then be like, oh, she's the. Del- del- and it's like, no, no, she's not. She's delusional. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about, Bones? Yeah. It's one of those things, like in this episode, where. She could have so easily, like, just been like, Hey, do you remember, like, three weeks ago when oh. we did this and you said this, and then I said this, and then we did this? Yeah. Like, how would you know this? You know, like, you just yeah, rattle yeah. off stuff, you know, that they've been through, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And they do and a little bit in that one scene when Spock try and to. the security guard are in there. But yeah, it's still like, even after the mind meld, Spock's like, I do think it's true, but, you know, it's just still going out yeah. on a limb here. And it's like, okay. Like, and I admit, I understand, like, and that's what some of the, uh, some of the story is, like, decent. It's like, of course it would be, why, it's like, yes, they've encountered a lot of weird stuff in the series. But at mm-hmm. the end of the day, you know, it's going to take a little bit of convincing to be like, 
well, this lady that we just beamed up to the ship is now Captain Kirk. Like, you know, is like Captain Kirk is inside her mind, essentially. And it's like, yeah, it's weird. Know, yeah. Something bad has happened, and now he's not the captain. Now I'm the captain. It's like, okay. They've also seen things where people try to take over the ship. So it's like, yeah. Why would you believe anything? You know, so it's like some of it is interesting and some of it is well done, but there's a lot of it where it's just dragged out so that they have an episode. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause yeah. like we've seen Kirk be weird before right. in episodes. You know, we've seen him be right. like on secret missions from Starfleet and he acts weird and kind of irrational. But yeah. I mean, he's never. <laughs> he's never called like his second, third, and fourth in command like into a trial and then wanting to execute them. Like like immediately that is like, okay. Right. That should be not a Kirk. red flag. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you doing it, Kirk? Why are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you keep shooting phases at us, Kirk? We're friends. <laughs> that's because no other episode exists before this. Well, that's true. Or after this. <laughs> <laughs> that's correct. Yeah. Except this is the only time that I and I thought they reference it though, right? This is the thing that I was like, well, in a weird way, this is for what Star Trek is and how much they don't refer to like any episode. This is like the only episode that I can think of where at least what we what we watch where they refer to other episodes and like other missions and other things that like we've seen, you know? Yeah. And I was like, it's kind of nice in the fina- finale sense. It's like if you if you think, even though they weren't writing it like for a finale, if you think about it, yeah, it's like oh, it's like well, yes, remember this mission? Like there's this callback and there's this whole thought of like, yeah, but don't don't Kirk's friends know who Kirk is? You know, kind yeah. of thing. Like there's a there's a slight sense of finality there that feels good, but. You know, it's it's just a it's just a bad episode. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, for for Spock to even say like we've encountered like weird aliens before that have had technology that we don't know anything right. of, or right, <laughs> it's like yeah, no kidding, you're in space, dude. Like it's <laughs> anything can happen. We have <laughs> that commercial break, and the thing I wrote, which I think you can agree, but you'll let me know. I think Shatner is great in this episode. Yeah, absolutely. His, his He's amazing in this episode. His like way he carries himself and conducts himself as this lady, like basically trying to be a woman. But it's nice. He doesn't do all these like, oh, and like fix his hair and like, you know, it's like he just he just acts a little differently. He just acts a little strange. And it's nice because Shatner knew from direction that yes, he's a woman inside of a man's body, so you got like a comedy thing going there. But then also he knows that she's trying to blend in as Kirk. So you have like this middle ground of yes, a woman inside a man's body, but she's trying to act like a man. And that's mm-hmm. what Kirk has to do. Shatner has to act like act like that and i think i think he did a really really good job Mm -hmm. especially in the early parts of of the episode like before we get towards the end where she's just you know now it's female hysteria but shatner's doing it like other than that the the beginning parts of the of the episode is really good with his acting yeah i i thought she did a pretty good job at pretending to be kirk too Yes, yes. In, in certain yes. scenes. I definitely agree too. Yeah, that there's that there's that scene where she's sitting on the bed and the security guard and Spock are in the room and he's and she's just sitting there and she's just listening, like right. Mm-hmm. She's not she's very calm and very like even when Spock's like, I'm not really sure if I believe you, you know, he he just stays calm the entire time. He's like, Well, all right. Like, well, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Yeah, and it would have been very easy for her to do like what I always do, be like, there's got to be right. some way. <laughs> right, 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 like, right. But she was very ah. like calm and collected, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Read my mind, Spot. Read it. Read it. You can melt my brain. <laughs> <laughs> but 
it's just, it's just for me because I'm an egomaniac apparently. But I thought, <laughs> I thought, ooh, Starbase Two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Medical yeah. facilities. I was like, yeah, buddy, yeah. <laughs> And for those who don't know, Starbase Two is a is a frequent reference in our RPG that we play on the channel. Yeah. Do you remember in the, one of the scenes where Kirk, Lester Kirk, is up on the bridge and uh, Spock is kind of questioning him and all these things, and then there's this great shot of Shatner doing this slow eye look to Spock because he's just yeah. like. Mm, like I really don't appreciate that you keep pushing back kind of thing. Yeah. I forget who's talking to him. Somebody else is talking to him. Maybe it's Sulu. I can't remember, but then there's this like kind of slow look (laughs) to Spock, (laughs) like "Mm, shut your mouth, Spock. Shut Shut your your Vulcan hole. (laughs) (laughs) Shut your Vulcan mouth. (laughs) Yeah. So we're at the halfway point. So go down to the comment section. And since we've been saying it a lot, write Lester Kirk down in the comment section. (laughs) So, you know, we had a good acting with the two of them her and him. So we come back from commercial and I thought it was really funny. Made me think of you was when nurse chapel comes in and gives Kirk Lester the, mm-hmm. uh, the drink, the like mixture yeah. whatever it was. And it's like, Oh, weird scene. Oh, this is delicious. And then she's standing there and then it's like, <laughs> Oh, is it is it possible, Nurse Chapel, that I could drink this very slowly? She's like, absolutely. Yeah. And then she so leaves weird. the room, right? And the thing that made me laugh was Nurse Chapel leaves the room, and then immediately she's just like, <laughs> just like breaks the glass and then gets the broken thing and is like sawing at the strap. <laughs> just like, just the, it was just, it was just yeah. the abruptness of you don't realize that's what she's going to do. And she like pours the, she pours the drink out and then breaks the glass. Yeah, that's not that's not what I thought <laughs> she was gonna. You know, Kirk was was doing right. in that scene. Yeah, because like <laughs> when he pours it out, like right on the carpet, like right in front of the bed, it was like I think they would know that you poured the drink out on the bed. You know, right, like, right, right. Yeah, yeah, that was that was pretty funny. Don't give me this. I'm gonna. I got to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and then later, you know, she makes her way down to the med bay and comes in and McCoy and mm-hmm. Spock and Kirk are all in there and she gets in there and then it's like, oh, and Lester Kirk is get backs her out into the hallway and then is like, ah, God, he chops her <laughs> in the neck. <laughs> and McCoy yeah. and they're like, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> yeah. She's dangerous. I don't kill her i don't care (laughs) yeah she that scene i did enjoy when like they're all kind of having like their sidebar conversations you know oh yeah like we should really probably just talk to her you know about stuff it's kind of you know interesting that she's saying she's saying these things and and then (laughs) kirk comes while like walking in all like do to do, yeah. Here for my <laughs> checkup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And she comes running into the like middle of the room where she can clearly see all three of them. And she's like, <laughs> she's like, Bone Spock, I need your help. Don't you can't listen to Kirk. He's oh, oh, he's already here. <laughs> like, yes, he's been yeah. in this room the whole time. <laughs> he never, <laughs> he never left. So, yeah. other than the really good mind melt scene, mm-hmm. we can move on to trivia. Oh, not again. All right, now you're overacting. So, in trivia, 
Uhura is the only regular character absent in this episode. Yeah. Uh, Nichelle Nichols had a singing engagement at the time and was unavailable. So she was replaced by Barbara Baldwin as Lisa. Coming to get you by, bro. Yeah. Well, at least they replaced her with some no-name white lady, you know? It was so weird that, like, when I was like, where the heck is, it? like, Ohura? Because, like, I didn't, you know, I didn't know that she wasn't in the episode. And it was just like, yeah, we're not going to mention it. It's, it's totally fine. Yeah. She's there. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the thing that kind of sucks is, like, you know, like, they didn't know they were getting canceled. So, like, she's yeah. not in it because it's just like, oh, whatever, I can miss an episode kind of thing. <laughs> Maybe they did know they were getting canceled. That's why she's like, yeah, I'm going to go do this singing thing because um, that's not getting canceled. <laughs> <laughs> there is a detailed account of the filming of this episode in the 1975 book Star Trek Lives. Co-author hmm. Joan Winston had the opportunity to spend six days on the set while Turnabout Intruder was being shot. She wrote that Shatner was very ill with the flu at the time and had considerable difficulty picking up and carrying Sandra Smith, which was Dr. Lester, for take after take. So on those takes where he had to keep picking her up and stuff. Oh, yeah. So you'll like this. He's <laughs> At one point, Shatner says, you know I love you, baby, but you've got to lose about six inches off that butt. Which brought the house down. <laughs> oh, I, I, I thought you would enjoy that. Yeah, that sounds really good. Uh, Joan there's Winston. Like, was, go ahead, no, go ahead. Like two or, there's only like two or three scenes where he picks her up. Yeah, it's he like carry, he carries her back on board. Yeah. No, there's a couple other ones. I can't think of him, but yeah, mm. not not too many. But he clearly was he must he was sick. Oh god, he did look pretty sweaty, didn't he? He did. Said so Joan Winston also recalled many amusing anecdotes that took place during the shooting. For example, William Shatner flubbed the line, so he says, "Spock, give it up. Come back to the Enterprise family. All charges will be dropped, and the madness that overcame all of us on Camus Two will fade and be forgotten." So that's what he says in the that's what he's supposed to say. And instead he blurted out, Spock, it's always been you. You know it's always been you. Say you love me too. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's funny. That I like that. That's good. Yeah. During the first three filming days, pre-production was underway for the 25th episode of the season, The Joy Machine, to be directed by William Shatner. However, as reported by Joan Winston, on the fourth day of filming, Monday, January 6, 1969, Gene Roddenberry came to set and informed William Shatner that the series was canceled by NBC and his directorial debut wouldn't be produced. Despite oh, suffering from the flu and saddened by the news, Shatner performs his scenes perfectly. Wow. So that was going to be his like first time directing. Yeah, one of the other well, an episode yeah. coming out. That sucks. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what the Joy Machine would have been, but <laughs> it doesn't sound too good. Let's see if they have a synopsis somewhere. It's the same it's the same as this just like on a different planet. They switch bodies. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have something. It says Dealt with the population of a Federation colony getting addicted to a sophisticated machine stimulating the brain's pleasure center, which rewarded yeah. the workers with hours of joy in exchange for the <laughs> for the work hours. Yeah, that's pretty much what I expected it to be. In one of the rewrites, uh, Spock becomes addicted to the machine, too. Because he never felt pleasure before. <laughs> Uh, then it was reworked again and took place on a planet inhabited by mentally ill people and featured a love story for Scotty. Oh, wow. Uh, then it threatened the entire crew of the Enterprise and made both McCoy and Scotty slaves. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So 
So a different guy, different James Gunn, different James Gunn. Mm -hmm. But it says decades later, the Joy Machine was later adapted into a novel written by James Gunn, but not the James Gunn we all know. His his grandfather. Yeah. No. His great grandfather, James Gunn. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he died at 97, so maybe. Yeah. And lastly, in trivia, it says a scheduled air date of March 28th, 1969 was preempted by news coverage of the death of former President Dwight D. Eisenhower. This episode was not aired until June 3rd, 1969 for that reason. Oh, wow. So imagine you're a loyal Star Trek watcher. It's the middle of, uh, it's like middle to end of March. And you're ready to watch next week's episode. And then the former president dies and the news is covering it. And then like two and a half months later, they air the that episode and then it gets canceled. <laughs> wow. That's pretty good. Yeah. So that was trivia. And before we wrap it up, we have the last little bit before the end of the series. I thought you would appreciate this joke. Oh, isn't it <laughs> nice that Kirk Lester found a nice dress to wear to the court martial. <laughs> it really made yeah. me laugh because he yeah. was in like a or I should, whatever she was in like a I don't know some sort of like dress medical thing I don't know a gown or something yeah and then comes in with this like nice like pantsuit thing I don't know with pink stripes yeah in a weird, yeah weird place down the like, back because it's well, it's space. It's a space dress from the yeah. 60s. Yeah. But when you think about it, like, okay, it's Where it's Kirk that? inside her body. <laughs> yeah, why would... Yeah. So... It, well, I can't go and not look beautiful. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's just like... There's nobody dressing him up. They're not going to do that. So it's like he had to go find woman's clothing because she's mm -hmm. not on the ship. Right. And then have to be like, yes, I'll wear this. And put oh, that. Hura, I need yeah. your best dress. Yeah, I thought she wasn't. Sure. I here there's going to be an execution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is that is really really funny. Yeah, yeah. But you know what though, I really enjoyed the court scene. It's it's not terrible. It's definitely not terrible. It's funny because um, so season two of Strange New Worlds opens with a court thing and i was like man i did not realize that i needed like starfleet court episode courtroom drama episodes like <laughs> i really really enjoyed it and yeah. then watching this i was like cool more courtroom stuff <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. i love it yeah well i can't wait to put dr house on trial then <laughs> 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 I thought you would agree with this. Is is Scotty the savior of all? Is Scotty the savior of this episode? So, not necessarily get jumping ahead and having you do mm. the trophy thing, but the the thing I was thinking was if Scotty hadn't walked out in the hallway and like talked with McCoy and basically pressured McCoy and like reasoned with McCoy that like, hey. I get that like there's very little proof, like physical, medical, mm -hmm. tangible proof that this is true, that that Captain Kirk is no longer the individual Captain Kirk. It's now this Dr. Lester. Like if he hadn't reasoned with McCoy, it would have been two to one, right? He McCoy yeah. would have been like, Well, I can't say that this is accurate because of the medical records. I can't say definitively like this is true so therefore i'm going to say no of course or i'm going to say like yes to whatever he's going to vote with lester kirk he's going to make the same thing that he's going to say and it's going to cause dr janice lester go away yeah get executed or whatever so to me it's like going forward when you look at anything dealing with the enterprise or kirk or anything of that nature, like Scotty is kind of the reason why it doesn't happen. Because like Spock mm -hmm. tries, but Spock is also on trial, right? It's like he might also get executed. So I just thought maybe 
maybe Scotty doesn't get enough love, really. Like, he's the reason why anything from this episode forward of Kirk content or Spock content is, like, really, really good. Like, he's the reason for it. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's not hard for me to argue with you that it's Scotty's show. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, I mean... I don't know. It's one of those things too. It's kind of annoying where it Scotty's like the voice of reason. Even like yeah, yeah. McCoy is like, well, I I know for a fact that that's not Kirk and he doesn't act like my friend Kirk and right. all this stuff. But, you know, Starfleet's going to want facts and we don't have any facts. It's like, okay, how about the fact that like his three best friends on the ship are like, hey, this guy is not Kirk. Right. Isn't that, wouldn't that be fact enough to like, we've served with him for 10 years. We know him inside and out. Like, right. This is not him. Like, they're just gonna be like, yeah, where's your proof? Where's your proof? (laughs) What? Starfleet is just a bureaucratic nightmare. That's all. (laughs) Yeah, I'm no fan of Starfleet. (laughs) The other funny thing is that Scotty and McCoy like don't know how the ship works, you know. They're like, "Hey, let's go talk out in the hallway." Oh, <laughs> and then it was like, "Oh, we were recorded." <laughs> it's like, um, uh huh. Play it back. Play it back. <laughs> Play back what they just said. So I'm it's going mutiny. to kill him, <laughs> Scotty. You're talking about mutiny. I, I. <laughs> I say we take the breach. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, exactly. So you probably later when everything breaks up and he's back on the bridge mm-hmm. and the other four of them are in the brig, mm-hmm. you probably saw the famous meme shot. Yeah, and then the hands uh-huh. go up. Oh, like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was pretty good, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the thing, right? Is that it doesn't got, explain it? <laughs> they got like extremely lucky that it just stopped working. <laughs> yeah, right. It's time to wrap up the episode. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, right? So, like, <laughs> you're in the middle of this court thing, and they're like, oh, we're going to execute these guys. And you're like, oh, man. And then, like, I paused it and looked at it, and there's like four minutes left. And I was like, well, oh, okay, well, this will be wrapped up quick, not explained. Real quick. <laughs> and then it's just like, well, it's randomly reversing for no reason. And then the doctor guy is never really questioned, even though he's that Coleman guy that we were A talking about. Full, like, like conspirator and knew the whole time. Like, nah, it's fine. And they're like, what do you want to do? And he's like, I'd like to take care of her. She's very sick. And they're like, I think that's totally fine. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what could go wrong? <laughs> yeah. Oh boy! And then the funny thing was, is they're like, "Here's a doubly lethal hypo spray, right?" And tries to get him, and then they drop it on the ground, and they're just like, "All right, boys, to the bridge," and they just leave. And I know they don't know that the yeah. hypo spray was like a double lethal poison thing, but it's like they just leave it I, on the ground. I like how she was strong enough to stop Kirk from stabbing her with it, and then yeah. when Kirk took back over his body, he's just like. Drop it. <laughs> and she's like, ah, I can't. I can't <laughs> yeah. hold it. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. It's t- you're too strong. It's too strong. I'm sad. <laughs> I want to be captain. I want to be captain. Ruined everything. You ruined, ruined my it. life. You ruined it. <laughs> uh do you understand? I want to be a woman. <laughs> I want to be a man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he says something. There's a line too where they say something, and I was just like, "Oh god." Yeah, yeah she's very, she's very like hateful of being a woman. Yeah, there's some. There's yeah, like that line. I think you're thinking of. Like, it's now nasty. you see. Now you see how disgusting and horrible it is. Yeah. Yes. That. that yes. 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 <laughs> To yeah. be a disgusting <laughs> woman. <laughs> Try to become captain now, you filthy woman. <laughs> you can't do it. <laughs> I'm the captain. 
Yeah. So they basically explain that real quick by like, oh yeah, you might you the transfer might go back the other way unless you kill the other person. Right, right. And she's like, all right, well, we have to go kill him. And he's like, I'm not killing anybody. Yeah. She's like, well, you should do it. Do it for yourself then. Because if you don't, I'll kill you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that makes perfect sense. Let it go. Yeah, that and the whole other thing that made me laugh, too, was like, he's like, well, I'm not going to be a murderer. And she's like, you already are a murderer. You did all this stuff for me on the planet. And he's just like, well, well, I don't. I don't know, though. I mean, that was indirect. This is right. very direct. <laughs> no, this makes me so, mad. what did they do on the planet? Because, like, that doesn't get explained either. It was just like, oh, you already killed everybody on the planet. As it says, uh, she discovers this life entity transfer device. Mm-hmm. And her plans to use the device herself required several months of preparation. The, and then this Dr. Coleman had felt was like in love with her. And so together they killed the expedition's entire staff by quietly exposing them to Celebium radiation. Mm. The mysterious deaths announced by a distress call were meant to attract the attention of a starship. So she basically, they expose, she has him expose them, the, see the, the team to this radiation so that, when they make the distress call to get use this transfer thing, they can take a ship. That's literally all. So she literally kills everybody just so that a Starfleet yes. ship will come to distress. And then so, she can use the machine to take over the captain. So she was going to take over any captain, just happened to be Kirk that Kirk. showed up. Right. Riveting. Yeah. Riveting. <laughs> yeah. So that concludes the review. But before we send it out, let's go and do the thing everyone's been waiting for. Caleb. 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 Caleb, who gets the Erica Ortegas Award for being most unlikable? Oh, that's got to be Dr. Lester. (laughs) Lester. Lester. Yeah. So, yeah, she's awful. Yeah, terrible. she's terrible. And yeah, it's one of those things that like it's <laughs> she's terrible and it's terrible, but she's supposed to be terrible. Yeah. She's not there's been a lot of female characters in Star Trek that I've not liked. Yeah. Just because well, they're really awful characters. And yeah, not supposed to they're not supposed to be bad characters. Right. So I will say not liking her in this episode because she's not supposed to be likable is nice. True. I mean, she she's a good she's a good actress. Yeah, I agree. So there. Yeah. So who gets the Elizabeth Cutler Award for being most forgettable? Man. So my obvious go to, I want to say like Ohura. Yeah. Is pretty forgettable, but honestly, Nurse Chapel is pretty okay forgettable this episode yeah she changed her hair and everything and now you don't know who she is no idea (laughs) no no idea who she is (laughs) yeah i don't know yeah because even in that scene like she doesn't really fight for anything either she there's that scene where the other doctor guy is like um I don't know. I think I know the patient better. And Kirk is like, oh, yeah, well, you're completely in charge then. <laughs> and McCoy's like, this is my medical room. This is my, like, right. I'm in control of the ship medically. Like, right. it's my duty. And Nurse Shepel's like, so do I inject him? In? Do I inject her yet? Or, like, what am I doing? And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> what you should have left with McCoy. What What are you talking about? Yeah. She's like, all right, well, am I sedating? Well, then, you know, should I just should I sedate her now or what? Like, what are we doing? Like, no, no, you shouldn't. You should trust McCoy. Not some nope. random dude in a tunic. We all know McCoy is unreliable. You both know, like McCoy and Chapel both as medical professionals know, like, hey, 
this patient is finally coming to like this is good and and kirk and the other guy are like you need to put her out you need to make her sleep so she can't talk i mean so she can't um, hurt herself any further yeah. like, <laughs> all right well this is suspicious so what do you what do you think kirk like 20 cc's or like 30 <laughs> seasons <laughs> yeah so good good Sh- should have left with mccoy is what i'm saying yeah well it wasn't in benga so she's not as friendly and it wasn't spock in the bed so who cares right also she does watch mccoy get roughed up a little bit before deciding to trank that guy too so <laughs> just doesn't like him probably not he does yell at her he certainly he pretty much yells at everybody. <laughs> okay, who gets the Trip Tucker Award for being the MVP? I like your thing. I'll, I'll go with I'll go with Kirk. Or uh, wow. Oh, I'll go with Spa, uh, Scotty. Okay. <laughs> I'll go with McCoy. Smog Kirk. Scotty. Spa. Check off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say that'd that. be. That'd be a first, right? Oh gosh, yeah, that'd be really. I'm fun. not setting the coordinates, sir. I'm no. not doing it. Why what does no doing? one on the bridge <laughs> listen to me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I loved it. I loved when they both like took their hands off the council. He yeah. just was so, so appalled. Like, yeah, it was really funny. Like she had no idea, right? Like. Well, if I'm the captain, then that means people listen to me no matter what, because I'm in no charge. Like, it's not about being in charge, idiot. It's about like respect. Like you have to respect the captain. Like, yes, you go along with what the captain says because you respect him. It's not you don't just bark orders and they listen to you because they have to. Do. Right. This isn't the mirror universe. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. True. Sure. Yeah. Tell me. But yeah. Scotty is a good, I think, honestly, personally, I know I kind of swayed you, but I think personally, Scotty is the MVP of the episode. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he explained his side pretty well, you know. He did, absolutely. Okay, what gets the Shran Award for the best action sequence? That's got to be Spock nerf pinching all those guards. Oh! (laughs) That was pretty good. He's like, yeah, you know, so there's the first guy when he's leaving the room and he goes to do it and he's like, no, no. And the guy's like, he immediately knows what Spock is going to do. And he's like, Sakara, no. Nah. And then he and just reaches over. <laughs> yeah. And then the other guy comes in and he's like, everything's all right, Ensign. Everything is fine. We've worked it all out. And he's like, well, what happened? I heard shouting. And he's like, oh, well, and he's just like reaches over. And <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's also got to be funny yeah. for, for at the end of the day, those two guys to have a conversation afterwards. Like, so we were right. Kirk was in the wrong body. And uh, I, I'm not sorry, but I am sorry and that I had to do that to you. <laughs> I was just, uh, yeah, following orders. Yeah. What gets the NX award for some sweet ship stuff? I always like seeing the, um, like the science lab. Okay. Like the bigger the bigger part of the mm-hmm. lab where he's yeah, I know what you're talking about, yeah. Yeah. He's mixing tubes and stuff. I always like seeing that. I agree. It's a pretty especially being on the the tour, like you can enjoy parts of the ship a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. What gets the Porthos Award for being the cheesiest thing of the episode? I think that's when the bodies were switching back over. Oh, okay. <laughs> and they showed like they showed like the face. Oh yeah. And like bright pink and like faded in and out, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That meme thing where he's got his hands up and screaming. <laughs> that is pretty cheesy. And lastly, what gets the Enterprise Award for the best scene of the episode? The courtroom scene. I thought it perhaps would have been that. Yeah, Pretty specifically good. like Spock, like rebuking Kirk constantly. Oh yeah, and like always having an answer for everything, you know. Yeah, the like the ones that always got me is when he's like, "Captain," 
Mm -hmm. sir (laughs) he would be like real (laughs) yeah because kirk goes on this whole diatribe and he's like that's not what i'm saying at all actually oh yeah actually that's not what i said well that was what caleb thought those were the award ceremony so as always you guys you can go down to the comment section let us know what you thought of the episode did you like it did you hate it you know this is the series finale Obviously, it's not uh, a good series finale for an iconic, legendary show. So write down your thoughts and let us know down below. Down below. It was absolute rubbish. Rubbish. (laughs) (laughs) So next week, there will not be a traditional Retrek review. And the following week, there also won't be a traditional Retrek review. Uh, Caleb and I, in a in a way, are taking a two week break. There will be some content on the channel relating to it, but it'll be shorter. Next week, it'll be what Caleb thought of season three from the limited episodes that we watched, and then the following week will be what did Caleb think of the entire series. We'll do that. Oh boy, back. <laughs> God. Um. So those will be the next two episodes on the channel. But everybody's waiting. What are we going to cover after we just completed season three and the entire series of Star Trek, the original series? Well, three weeks from now, we are going to get into, uh, again, a limited uh, extension, Star Trek, the animated series. Oh, going to cover a few episodes in that. And... um, Go from there. Where there's a, there's not that many, but I don't feel like it's necessary to cover every single episode. So that's what you have to look forward to once we get back in the normal routine of things. The animated series. Nice. As always, you can like the video if you like it. Dislike it if you disliked it. Share it with all your friends and family and Trek enthusiasts. Uh, subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Um, and ring that bell for notifications so you don't miss when an episode like this comes out or when Star Trek history happens. And eventually when we have another RPG episode, you'll know when that happens. Um, and you can always go over to Caleb's channel, the Plastic Underground Props. So Caleb, you can let us know if you have anything coming down the pipeline. Yeah, so this week I'm putting out a video going back to an old series, uh, printing them, got to print them all. So I do the Nidoking evolution. I make a little diorama for that. And then next week, there's an anniversary for Space Ghosts, coast to coast. Yep. So I'm going to put out a little Space Ghost video next week. So that'll be fun. That will be fun. And yeah. if you like space stuff, all of May, I know what I don't want April to be over yet, but all of May is going to be space, mostly alien stuff. Uh, oh. Alien is having like the 45th year anniversary yeah. next month. Um, the 23rd, I think. Yeah. 25th. Up 25th. Day, yeah. So all of next month is going to be space and aliens. Yeah. It's really funny. I had a guy on Facebook the other day. He, and he was asking me like, hey, have you have you made all the armor from alien? And I was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> I have not all the armor from alien. <laughs> and he was like, oh, what about the pulse rifle? And I was like, it's funny that you should ask. Because, yes, <laughs> I have a video on the pulse rifle coming out in May. And he was like, can I have it now? Mm. <laughs> yeah, he was like, <laughs> I don't care. Where is it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, May's going to be a good month. You got, May's you know, gonna be May. the, the obligatory May the 4th. That's always a good mm. one. Yeah. And then you have, Do I uh, have anything planned for May the 4th? I don't think so. And then, uh, you know, 25th anniversary of episode one. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's when our podcast will come out then. Yeah. The original. Yeah. 
Yeah. The fun thing is, is if you're like many of us, you and if you enjoy listening to Caleb and I talk about things and not just Star Trek over on his channel, we're doing a monthly Dragon Ball rewatch for him. It's like the I, I've talked about it a few times. It's the inverse of what this is. And also he re- has up on his channel right now Rogue One. Now him and I have both seen Rogue One, but you know. It's more sci-fi mm-hmm. content of him and I talking. So you can go over to his yep. channel or anything like that. We look forward to his fun videos. They're good. Maybe you'll find something over there that you want to make or just watch or something. So Okay. Yeah, I, oh. I got tons of stuff. He does. He has a lot of videos, like almost 200 videos on his channel. So, and not everything is a podcast. So, I've gone through recently too, and I put them all in playlists. Cool. Um, our Nerd Hole Podcasts has its own separate playlist. We have a playlist for Dragon Ball, and we have a playlist for 90s Rewind, and we have a playlist cool. for MCM, Star Wars. And Star Wars, right? Star yeah. Wars specifically, yeah. Um, and then there's a playlist of just like all handmade like foam props that you can just watch all of them. And um, yeah, I think that's I think that's it. I think I have a playlist for like I try to keep everything separate. So like if something's 3D printed and painted, it's like in a different playlist. Yeah, right, right. Makes sense. So I think I got them all in there. I think there's like 60 something of just all foam handmade stuff. Awesome. So, yeah, it's cool. So just push play and, like, go to sleep. Make a cake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, as always, Shoot. thanks for watching, and we appreciate it. We appreciate everything that you do. Thanks for the comments. And uh, this is it. See you in a couple weeks for another official review. Don't get, it, don't get sad. We'll still be here, but it won't be the full long form for a few weeks. So, until then, computer and program. See you guys. See ya. The Retrek Review is a Daystrom Holodeck podcast produced in association with the Plastic Underground Props. Hosted by Caleb Stoddard and Will Wilbur. Edited by Will Wilbur. Our intro song is by Kaylee Joy Rookledge. Our theme song is by Samo Studios. And our outro song is by Tommy T. Title card art created by Caleb Stoddard. Trophy art created by Adri Wilbur of Love by the Letters. Synopsis and written plot provided by memory-alpha.fandom.com. Star Trek is created by Gene Roddenberry and all official clips and pictures are owned by Paramount Pictures. You can follow us at the Plastic Underground Props and the Daystrom Holodeck on Instagram and on YouTube. Thanks for watching.